sorry about that. What? Yo, did you hear the Pokemon theme music that just blared from one of my no. alarms? No. I think I'm out. It's dead on. Okay. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 25 of the Gene Pool Variety Hour. Connor just knocked something over there. No, 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 a roach just crawled over my foot. Well, we are in the garage. We're yeah. in a shipping container. No. So, that's what you get for being out here barefoot. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm Sean, I'm the old dad, old fart of the, of, of the group. And I'm Connor, the grossed out currently <laughs> member of the group. So, anyway, look, we're uh, father's side, we're nerds of the house, and we like talking nerdy stuff. And so we review Everything some random movies. We uh, talk geeky stuff. We usually have a geek question that we do every every week. Sometimes we, we play games. Sometimes updates. we just kind of ramble on. So uh, and we chase a lot of chickens. That's that's Chase. That's our mascot because we chase a lot of chickens because we're both ADHD as the day is long. With his so, new sunglasses. Yeah, he has sunglasses now. It's officially summer. Uh, first day of summer was Saturday, so it's oh, now really? officially summer. So he needed his sunglasses. Actually. And if you notice on his beak, he's got a little white from like the the, the zinc oxide. The zinc oxide, you know. So he's good to go. He's good for the summer. It's actually so, super glue. <laughs> no, it's zinc oxide. It just looks like super, super glue. glue. <laughs> anyway, um, so we always start out with just talking a little bit about what we've been doing, what's going on. And I'm going to go ahead and say the stuff that I got to say first because he's got, got something stuff. kind of big to say. Super so big. So, anyway, um, still doing the telework thing. Uh, it's kind of indefinite. So, we, right now. So, I don't Basically know when I'm going to be going back to base, happen until we get a but cure. I still have full permission to do the telework. I'm doing that. Speaking of which, because I'm constantly trying to find ways to reach out to my guys because I work for the military and I actually have. Parts of my unit work are on literally coast to coast, east coast and west coast. So I'm always trying to find ways to reach out to them. So last week, I started a podcast, another podcast for them. Resiliency. That, that makes you go, you know, have like three podcasts you know, I got, in the I works. got just those two. The other one's an idea that I have that I haven't done anything with yet, except okay. come up with the logo. <laughs> I haven't got time for that one. Uh, so anyway. Ain't nobody uh, got time so for now, that. Huh? Um, of that meme from, from, from years ago. Um, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So anyway, I um, so I started a podcast, did an episode last week, and just short, a weekly podcast, about 20 minutes. Uh, I recorded the second episode Jeez. today, and it's 30 minutes. It's way too too long, so i got to edit it and redo it. So Connor's yeah. dancing over there at Invisible whatever. No, but and it's, it's another cockroach. Buddy, it's not a cockroach. This difference between a nasty cockroach and those wood roaches that come from outside. We basically live in the woods, and so they come in from outside. They, they, What's the difference? They look exactly the same. Uh, cockroaches are because you're just nasty and dirty and got food laying around and that kind of stuff. And these are just, they live in the trees and they're trying to come inside. They don't last longer than 24 hours. So, sorry for the entomology <laughs> lesson that we just had. How do you know that, though? You fount of useless knowledge, you. It's just you, dude. You're anyway. The Cliff of the family. So I started this new podcast, and it's it's just resiliency, stress management, that kind of stuff for my for my guys. So yeah. if you guys are interested, I'll let you know. I mean, it's out there on Spotify. Anyway, it's called Reinforce Radio. But anyway, Spotify. Um, and it'll be on Apple and Google Podcasts. So yeah, that's kind of something that's been on on me lately. Yeah, that's pretty uh, cool. And game wise, just I really been just focusing on stuff. Destiny because the new season of Destiny. Is, is in full swing, and there's some stuff that I really want to get in there. Um, so I've just been kind of doing that, just grinding that. And it's actually not much of a grind. I'm, you know, I'm not a huge Destiny grind fan. Yeah. But this season, I kind of like the activity that came with this season, so I don't mind it. So it's not too bad of, of a thing. Um, so that's what's been going on with me. Don't really have much else going on. Um, but this guy over here has probably a pretty big announcement to tell you guys. So oh, I'm going to shut up and let him talk. Let's see. Should I go right off with the, with the big thing or build up to it? It's your thing, man. You do what you want to. I'd, I'd build up to it, though. That would just be me. <laughs> I could make that. I could turn That's that so said. bad. Right, right, right. I got that. <laughs> okay, so um, so let's see. I think I'm going to go small first. Um <laughs> That, that's what she said. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> work work my way up up to to the big climb deal. Climb your way up to the big thing, right? <laughs> there you go. Okay. okay. Um, so that, Michael Scott would be proud. Oh my goodness. Uh, anyway. Okay. So so the, so my so the first thing. Yeah. Um, um, I've um I've gotten back into Pokemon Sword and Shield. I have Shield, um, to be um, and it's because of the new DLC the um that that came out for it, the Isle of Armor. It's um it's basically an expansion of of the world, and it, it includes new Pokemon. Well, not new Pokemon. It adds Pokemon to the region, right? Um, specific to to that area of the map. Um, it, it's, got, it's got an exclusive Pokemon that's like the mascot for it, Kubfu. Um, and um, and then his his evolved form, Urishifu, who is a badass. I love this dude to death. That I named mine Shaolin because he because he's a badass monk martial artist. Wait a minute. So last week, when we talked about my monk D and D character that I'm starting this weekend, by the way, yeah, um, you gave me a hard time about it being such a cliche name, Dayton Shade Hollow, and I explained it, and you name yours Shaolin. That's like Bob in in the martial arts world. He he um okay. Oh, um, Origi Fu is um is themed off of a Shaolin myth. From China, and um, and is literally a sun bear. Do you know what a sun bear is? I never mind. I'm not gonna say. I was gonna say. I know what a some something else is. I I said a sun, not some. <laughs> a sun Just bear. Having fun with you, Connor. Uh, um. So, anyway. Um, um, but yeah, I've um I've been having a great time playing that game just just because um 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 of all the new Pokemon that's been released, a lot of my favorites have come back. Um, Rockruff and um in his evolutionary line, Zoroa, um Abra and, and Alkazam, they've um they've added the new Slowpoke and, and Slowbro evolutions. Pokemon, Pokemon, gotta catch 'em all. Stick to your dancing. Not, neither are good. Let's be <laughs> honest. I I I will not get any tips tips at um at, at Chippendales. No, speaking of 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 large and in charge dancers, Chippendales dancers. Have you ever seen the? Oh, here's here's a. Have you ever seen out. the uh, the Saturday Night Live skit with Patrick Swayze and Chris Farley? Patrick Swayze was dirty dancing. The guy that like, yeah, 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 dance. yeah. Where well, they get out there and and you know, of course, it's Patrick Swayze with no shirt on, and then it's Chris Farley with, with no, no shirt, shirt on, on. <laughs> just going. And so that would be your character. You would be the Chris Farley of the Chippendales. Well, duh. but he had the most rhythm. That is true. He had the most rhythm in that skit. But anyway. um, okay, so let's see. After that, um, um. Hmm. That's basically the only the only relevant small thing I have. So I guess because everything go right else is to... packed up. Yeah. <laughs> Why is everything packed up? I'm moving. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, so is someone? Uh... That's that would be. I think that would be y- your your lady. <gasps> Nikki is that you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey Nikki's Nikki. Watching me. Oh my god. So he's That's all this, now. He's going to turn all this nice shader, this bald, shiny thing. He's going to oh turn this gosh. nice shader red over here now. See? <laughs> so you go ahead and embarrass him, Nikki. That'll be perfectly fine. Um, oh man. Okay, so, so anyway, yeah. Um, uh, up. Who's that? I don't know. Hey, Luke. So that, anyway, that, that would be my just, brother. Yeah. So. So. Um, anyway. <laughs> um. The so the thing that's happening is I am moving. Um, this week, this Saturday, actually, um, yep. um, um, it's, um, to start from the beginning. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't start from the beginning. Just go to the chase, man. <laughs> I, I can't miss the big announcement. <laughs> um, so, so what happened is, um. What had happened was. My fiance, Nikki, um, who, um, has, um, has been working as, um, 
as a as a CNA STNA um based um basically a nursing assistant at um um at at a retirement home and she, and she did it as mainly a way to kind of put herself through school but but since was in school c- kind of got all messed up with with this uh, COVID pandemic and all that she. Uh, she um she's been wanting a, a different job a different change of pace so so she's sorry so we so have a, I have so another son that doesn't really care what we're yeah. doing in here so yeah, he just yeah, kind of slams does. through so anyway um, <laughs> she so so she started applying and um and she was reached out to by by, by this company um um I believe it's a uh, service master <laughs> by faith huh she says it was the best of times it was the worst of times. <laughs> Oh man. Um ah the best of times are yet to come. Yeah, don't worry babe, I'm coming. Um <laughs> So anyway. So so yeah, um um base um basically she got this job um at at this company that um that does construction cleaning for um for for work sites, you know, um, you know, you know, basically basically going in and um and and cleaning up a before um um after they're done constr- um build, building the place and all that and um and, and so in their in the interview they asked her if she knew anyone else who wanted a job and and of course she talked about me this um this lovable mug right here um and um. And, and so she told me they said uh, they would hire me if I got local. So, so that sparked something right there. Um, and um, and so now this Saturday, um, 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 I've already applied. They, I've already applied to there. And um, and and so next week I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff, getting ready to actually start working. There. So 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 the plan the plan has always been that he was. Moving move this summer, probably into July, and then this opportunity just popped up and couldn't really pass up on it. So it was too good of a thing. Uh, it was too yeah, good it, to pass it was. up on. So you know he's he's moving Saturday. Yeah, and he's been on, packing on all his week. Birthday, everything. by the way. So and Saturday happens to be my birthday. So best present ever. Uh, <laughs> he's moving on. I'm 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 going to give you a better present though. Just don't worry. Just what, what I'm just I'm just I'm going for the joke, man. I know. I'm going for I the know. joke. So anyway. Um, yeah, so that's pretty huge news, and so uh, actually because of that, because of that, since this was his last week, you know, we usually stream on Monday nights, but you know, he had to work last night because since it was the last week, the boss said, "Hey, I'll just schedule whatever days I want to." So she yeah. scheduled him last night, and so we had this evening off, and so we're doing our stream tonight instead of last night, and yeah, literally it fell into your lap. I know, yeah, and. Um, is, so, um, it was a great opportunity. So we're streaming tonight instead of last night, and then we're also going to do one again, thir- another one on Thursday, so that we can have it kind of in the hopper for the next release schedule because he's moving to Ohio, and it's going to take him a while to get settled in and get it all, all structured and all that kind of stuff so that we can start doing this that you know remotely. He's going to be there. We're going to have two screens with two faces instead of one screen with two faces. So anyway, so... It, We'll be back on Thursday night if you want to watch us again. If you don't, that's okay too. But <laughs> it'll be on YouTube. So anyway, so that's kind of the big news. That I'll be been shaved going on. by then, hopefully. Anyway, I I don't look good, scruffy. Use, I don't. Useless knowledge. Man, there you go, master of useless knowledge. Like father, like son. So yeah, that's in, true. <laughs> which, so anyway, which probably means um, means my son is is going to be the exact same way. Oh, easily, <laughs> easily. It definitely doesn't skip a generation. Well, I don't know. Maybe it does because your, your granddad's not like that. So, so um, so um, so um, so, so it skips a generation, but then, but, but then focuses on the next two generations. But really my, right? I don't know. But my, um, my mother's father, my grandfather. Yeah, he was definitely Cliff Clavin. How do I want to say this? He was definitely. Not the most stable person that I knew. Um, he had some mental health issues, unfortunately, and uh, so I, and it could have been he may have been on the spectrum. But I mean, we have I have a lot of people on the spectrum in my family. Oh yeah, a lot. So I've got cousins with kids, and I've got uh, had a cousin who was on the spectrum. So it's something genetic going on in my family. So it skipped me. I get the nerd part. I didn't get the um, oh, what's up, Mitch? How you doing, Mitch, man? What's up? Um, so anyway, 
so that anyway, that's what it is. I just chased another chicken, I guess, and yeah. I forgot to hit the button. I so, gotcha. <laughs> so anyway, deleted chicken. Um, so that's kind of what's been going on. Destiny on my side, telework on my side. Moving to Ohio Saturday on his side. So also Pokemon. Do not forget Pokemon. Oh yeah, Pokemon. Pokemon um, will always be relevant. You know, we always do a random movie and uh, then do a geek question. And if you watched last episode, you know, we were going to review Dragonheart. Yeah. Um, the Dennis Quaid, Sean Connery movie. But between the time that Sean we rolled Connery. for that movie and we sat down to watch it, it was no longer on Netflix. So, <laughs> no how, big how deal, is, man. Okay, yeah, let's see. So, I anyway, so we had to scramble. And, I'm gonna piece okay, <laughs> if you want to read it, that's cool. Sorry. <laughs> I got to read it out loud. Sorry. So, <laughs> I'm not used to having messages <laughs> here. I'm not. So, anyway, so we had to scramble and pick another movie. So, we rolled, we stayed in the same category, and it was... Love Net- you, babe. Was it Netflix? It was Netflix, and it was fantasy action or whatever. Yeah. And so, we got Kung Fu Hustle this time. Kung so, Fu we're going to review Kung Fu Hustle this time, and our geek question is going to revolve around Kung that Fu movie. Hustle. So, it's going to um, be awesome. So, anyway, so... <laughs> I th- we usually we do the um, geek question first, and then we jump into the movie. But I think we're going to reverse it this time. Yeah. We're going to start with the movie. So let's just roll into our, the next segment of roll, roll for, for credits. credits. Maybe there you go. There we go. A little bit of a delay on our because we have cheap bastard uh, uh, stuff over here. So anyway, so look, so our, our our movie that we did this time was, was it 2004, I think it was? 2004 movie, Kung Fu Hustle. I know you guys have heard of it. Probably most people have seen it. I saw it a long time ago, or at least saw parts of it. Um, and I love Kung Fu movies. I, I just love the choreographed martial arts, um, especially the older ones like the, the, the Hong Kong ones, the the Bruce Lee's, the, the, the older um, yeah. Jackie Chan stuff. I love all that stuff, and um, so I didn't mind watching Kung Fu Hustle again, and I remembered faintly that there was something weird about it, and there was definitely something weird about it, and um, it's... Somebody's blowing up my notifications on my computer over here, so you guys are hearing all those. I I think it's me. Oh, it's just he hopped onto um, onto, uh, Xbox. Okay. And it's showing up on here. It's not supposed to be, but it is anyway. Yeah. So sorry about the noises. Um, but anyway, um, what I re- didn't remember was just how silly this movie is. Imagine if you um, took something like Kill Bill, because you have... Yeah, no big deal, man. Uh, you, you, uh, it's not you, it's my computer. So... Um, Imagine if you took Kill Bill, because the crazy 80s from Kill Bill are kind of like the Axe gang from this this uh, movie. Um, something like Drunken Master, uh, Jackie, that old Jackie Chan stuff. I love that um, one. And Looney Tunes. I would love to learn that. So if you took like a Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan martial arts movie from Hong Kong or, or back in the day um, and combined it with Looney Tunes or Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit might be more accurate because it's live action, but it has Looney Tunes-ish, cartoonish type stuff in it i would i would say that's kung fu hustle i would say more space jam well it's the same process i mean roger rabbit well roger rabbit was before your time anyway i love roger rabbit what are you talking about anyway so it's that kind of thing live action but the whole thing is live action but it's really interesting and i absolutely loved it uh i'd forgotten how much i liked that movie (laughs) Uh, I started watching it a couple of weeks ago and got through the first scene, and I'm like, ah, I just can't stomach this. I can't do it, man. It's just too weird. But then I got past it when we decided we we're going to watch it for the podcast, and uh, um, it it definitely grows on you. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, um, but how about we actually tell them about it? Then? Well, why don't you go ahead? And, you want to talk about it first? You no, know, why don't you, you tell them? Okay, I right. I always get bogged down in every tiny detail. Okay. So the plot line is: there's this gang called the Axe Gang, and they get whatever they want. It's a typical kind of thing. And they're kind of... And it's set in the 40s. So there's a lot of, like, choreography and dancing in this thing to set to, like, 40s music, which is kind of weird. Um, there's an old tenement called the Pigsty, which is basically this apartment Pigsty place. Pigsty Alley. Pigsty Alley. And there's a landlord, landlady, um, 
and just people live there and it's like this little community and they all kind of yell and hate on each other but they you can all tell that they kind of are it's close knit and they love each other and then this these two guys come up sing and bone was the big guy and they're just like your scuzzy little guys trying to con and blackmail out of you know the barber or whatever at this place they they're trying to pick fights he tries to pick fights with people uh saying that and he says that he's this big kung fu artist right um and then he tries to say that they're part of this axe gang which they're not uh and at some point shoots off a firework and it blows up on one of the axe gang's head they come the axe gang boss's head well not 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 the boss not the main boss not the main boss because you remember this guy got his back broken remember so it wasn't the main boss the main boss is the one that had the bad teeth through the whole movie. This guy oh, yeah, was only that, in that scene. There was horrible teeth and, and dental work in that movie for some reason. <laughs> yeah, all the, all, all the gang leaders had terrible teeth for some reason. And you would think and, and you think they would be able to pay for good dental work. So, that's the start of it. The Axe Gang comes and starts to attack people because they want to find out who set off the fireworks and um, blew up on his head. They start to beat up people in, in the little apartment complex. And there's a tailor, and there's a, a, some guy noodle called shop. Donut, and then noodle a, shop owner. a noodle it shop donut. donut, right? And then some guy named Cooley, who's just a guy Who's's there. Um, and they came to the def- the defense of the people that were there, the residents. And it turns out they're all kung fu masters, and they beat the crap out of the whole axe game. Oh yeah, they just we've, beat the crap out of all the ones that are there. Oh, and yeah. so then we we've, we've got one guy who's um who. Who, who uses like uh, le- like clothes rings on his arms? We've yeah, got one kind of guy iron uses, fist style. We've got a guy who uses um, a staff, and um, and then then one guy who's who's basically the um, a who's basically a just straight up fisticuffs kind of guy. Yeah. So so they beat up the X gang. X gang. They the, those those guys run off and they go to the um, the main guy and they decide they want to take these people out because they find out that these three guys that came to their um, defense they're actually kung fu masters and they found out who they were and so they start looking for people to take these guys out right yeah so now cut back to the the two scuzz buckets sing and bone and sing um was the one that talked a big game and thought he was all this and he told a story about learning the buddhist palm buying this book about the buddhist palm from some some guy when he was a little boy that the the guy told him that you had the bone structure of a kung fu master. Why don't you buy, give me ten bucks and buy this book and you can learn the Buddhist palm technique? And he did. Um, and he tried to save a girl, a little girl, a mute girl, uh, who deaf. was getting beat up by the. No, she wasn't deaf. She was mute. She couldn't speak. Oh. <laughs> so um, turns out that it was all fake, or so he thought, but. Uh, the guy told him when he told him, he says, you could be a great Kung Fu master, but your key is, is stuck. It's clogged. It needs to be cleaned out. Um, and so this guy always wanted to be a Kung Fu master, got beat up by people when he was a kid and when he tried to save this little girl. And, um, and so he just ended up being a street urchin and trying to con his way through life. Right? Yeah, basically. So then the story is the Axe folks, they get, these two guys that play this huge harp, huge Chinese harp, to try to take out the uh, the three Kung Fu masters. And Aren't they, they blind? Do. I don't know if they were or not, but they were weird. They had these weird long claws. and um, So we've, they took out... So we, they, found out we found out they needed those um, those the, claws. Because they were playing this harp thing. I, 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 believe, it, I believe it's pronounced a, a uh, guanjing. Um, basically, um, basically a oh, giant like Chinese that. harp kind of thing you know, that you lay on your lap. So... So they did that, and, they, and these guys came, and they went to the Pigsty Alley, and they fought. Use, they used their harp to, like, launch swords and skeletons and skeletal warriors at these Kung Fu masters and took them out. Um, they basically ended up all dying except one, and the last one that didn't die was talking to the landlord and landlady, who also happened to be Kung Fu masters, yeah. we find out. Um, he can just kind of move and kind of avoid getting punched well, and, and, well, and h- hang in the off, air. The landlady can can run at the speed of light. Oh, yeah. She, she, yeah, that's the first cartoon looking thing. <laughs> she runs. She runs so fast she can't see her legs. And it's like this um, little circle where her feet would be. It's, um, um, it, it's 
straight up Tasmanian devil almost. It, it, it is. <laughs> so, so anyway, so the the kung fu masters get taken out by these guys with a harp. Curl curlers, a nightgown, and a cigarette. <laughs> so I, I told you, I saw a woman cosplaying as her at Dragon Hunters Pass. Was great, <laughs> fantastic. So, anyway, oh she um, so they the harp guys take out the kung fu masters, but then the landlord and the landlady take them take out. out take them out. And she has she has something called the lion's roar, where she basically suck sucks her breath in and sucks her whole cigarette in, and then she fills shrieks. her chest up and shrieks and can blow everything away. And so she yeah. she beat them. Um, and, and the s- other guy is some um, is, is almost made out of rubber. Yeah, he can just kind of and it, so the the axe gang leader sees that and they said, okay, we want to get the the number one killer out there and there's some guy called the beast who's in an insane asylum uh and the axe Ooh, gang leader wearing crocs yeah the axe gang leader <laughs> it wasn't crocs it was just like flip-flops uh the axe gang leader um gets Singh to join the axe gang because he can pick locks and sends him into that place to to get him out and then there's this huge fight between the beast is what he called himself and um uh, the landlord and the landlady. Huge fight there. Singh ends to up... To the point where where um, <laughs> she um, she gets a giant funeral bell. Yeah, I mean, this like six feet tall, you know? Yeah. Bigger than me, and that's saying something. Bigger than me, and that's saying something, right? That's definitely saying something. Saying something. Little songs of songs. Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Beat that dead horse. Yes, I did. That's my shtick. So anyway, anyway, they um they basically pop the top off of this giant funeral bell. The landlord who um crouches down and, and and picks it up and basically basically we turn it into a freaking megaphone. We turn it into a giant megaphone, and she takes in the biggest gulp of air she can to um to the point where her, her waist is basically a um as as narrow as a quarter. Chase's neck. Yes, basically, her um her 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 upper torso is swole is swole. swollen. <laughs> swole. We'll just say swole. No, it's swole. Yeah. <laughs> and um and, and then she lets it rip and and she through like, basically that bell megaphone. Yeah. So it, it it's crazy. So they they end up ends up the, the three of them. The landlord, the landlady, and the beast end up in this little pretzel knot, all beating each other up and, and holding each other in these submission holes. The leader of the axe gang tells Singh to go hit hit him in the head, and he ends up hitting the axe gang leader in the head because he's driving him crazy, driving him crazy. Yeah. And then he hits the beast in the in the head. Beast lets go of him and then beats Singh to a pulp. I mean, literally punches him in the face so hard that he punches his head backwards into the ground, into the floor, and then he keeps Does punching. Does this several times. And, and, it, and his head just keeps sinking further and further into the floor, like very cartoonish. And uh, so in the end... And, and then somehow um, he comes back. Well, the landlord and the landlady steal him away, and they're, and he should be dead, right? But... Uh, he heals like amazingly fast. We see this earlier in the movie. Um, we did. That's right. The, we saw it earlier in the movie. Um, um, uh, the guy gets three knife um hits hits in his arms um in his shoulders. He um he he, he then gets bit twice. I um, some by, <laughs> by snakes. snakes on the lips, and his lip ends up like you know like one like of those dangling that, like, one, like one of those people tribes in Africa that has wears the plates and has the lip that hangs down to here. That's what his lip looked like. Yeah, so. and then um. And and then somehow we see um in in his little traffic light home or whatever yeah. he's um he's um his arms like 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 swell up veins and all that right and um and then then we start seeing him or or seeing the light and the metal dent he's punching yeah. it yeah. and he's basically going all around punching and kicking and and the final hit is the Buddhist palm right. And so in so in the end, the, the landlord and the landlady take him back to their place and wrap him up, and and he starts to heal, and he, he's healing super fast. Well, the ex gang leader, uh, well, second in command because the beast killed the ex gang leader. Yeah. Um, the beast came to fight them, and gets there, and he has healed at that point, and 
then he looks clean, he's wearing white. He's and shaved. He's shaved, and they had this huge battle at the end, the two of them. Um, the, the guy turns into a toad. The, the guy beast. turns into a toad because they they get to they they start fighting and he and Singh is beating him up. I mean he's he's just beating the crap out of this guy. But then he the guy lands on the ground and then he squats on the ground like a toad or a frog would. And it turns out he is the master of the toad style. And he starts his his he, neck he starts doing the ribbits. whole toad thing and ribbits and starts beating him up with that. It's like what the freak, man. Yeah, he throws. He ends up throwing Singh super high into the air and while he's in the air he sees a vision of buddha in the air and he starts coming down and turning into this flame and then he does this palm and it literally crushes the guy into the ground in a dent in the ground of the face of i mean the shape of a huge hand yeah so anyway the, so the, the heavenly fallen buddhist palm yeah I there you go so called. anyway so they end up fighting and and he beats this guy and the guy submits and he's and he's like like um um well, and, um no what um, what did you learn? Um, um, and, and Singh is like, "Do you want to learn?" And um, and Beast gets on his knees and says, "Master." So anyway, um, oh my, I'm not even gonna no, <laughs> no I'm not on. gonna go there. Come on, look, we 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 missed, <laughs> we left out one important, kind of important part. Uh, yeah. You know, I mentioned to you earlier about when he was a kid, he tried to save this old mute girl who had a sucker, and um, you, you didn't say anything about the sucker. I know. Well, I'm saying it now. Yeah. So then he gets beat up by this little gang of boys, um, and then he meets her again as an adult and realizes it's her is robbing her again, uh, not robbing her again, just robbing her. And then he feels really bad and he runs off and he leaves. Um, and so at the end, they meet again. He has opened up a, a sucker shop a candy with his shop. buddy Bone, a candy shop with his buddy stop, Bone. S- stop focusing on the sucker. Well, that's uh, the lollipop was all all day you ever saw. The sign was a lollipop. All the kids were eating lollipops. There was no other candy except lollipops. If you remember, there was no, anyway. You're I so could bad. really care, right? <laughs> so I just it's lo- so that's how it ends. Look, <laughs> that was super or disorganized. Yeah, well, basically, was. look, it was an art, it was a martial arts movie that was funny, and it had cartoon aspects in it. Um, but the martial arts, the choreography of the martial arts was really good. Um, the special effects added in um, just gave it more character. Uh, the humor of some of the characters was great. I mean. Uh, like for example, you couldn't you couldn't get away with today's culture, but the tailor uh, was clearly playing uh, Hom- a homosexual, homosexual. character. Uh, he was wearing like see almost see through really thin silk box uh, shorts, and you could tell he was wearing hot pink underwear underneath, and he was doing a lot of stereotypical kind of mannerisms. So you couldn't get away with that in today's culture but th- you know they're doing things like that and i think in that culture they they have characters like that a lot there was another character whose pants were never pulled up and so you and, always um, i mean we got f- a full view of well, of guy butt at well, least yeah, 10 times the front the was movie. pulled up but the back was always pulled yeah. down so all you ever saw was this the entire movie you saw this guy's bare ass the entire movie <laughs> and even at the very end all the characters in the movie are walking around the street near the the lollipop shop and, and he's his talking butt up, is still out. He's talking up a girl, got his hand up against a wall, talking to this girl, and his butt's still hanging out. I mean, it's just... So, if you like funny movies, um, and you like good choreographed martial arts stuff, this was a really good movie. Uh, I enjoyed it, um, it despite the fact that it was completely subtitled. Uh, and I did not mind I, that. And I didn't mind either, because... I didn't have to watch the subtitles as closely the second time because I watched it the second time with him. I watched it first time by myself, and I had to watch it really close just to follow the dialogue to see what was going on. But um, but overall, I mean, it, like I said, uh, 2004, Stephen Chow was the director. He was also the star. He also uh, wrote it. So, and I well, think geez, he I was think he in did everything. I think he was at least involved in, or he did. Sh- uh, was it Shaolin Soccer? Was there another movie that he may have done? I know he was involved in it somehow because they've talked about it. So, um, so anyway, and I think it was the same kind of style, kind of a funny movie with martial arts. So anyway, I, if you like martial arts, look, it's not going to be the unbelievably choreographed, long 
fight scenes like you might see in Kill Bill or some of the classic Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee martial arts movies, but the sequences were really good. The humor was good. But still, even though you had some of that that questionable stuff in there, it was a clean movie. Oh, yeah. You know, there wasn't a lot of bad language. You, you saw the one guy's bare ass, and that was it. Uh, you just saw it <laughs> repeatedly. Uh, um, it was like, but. So, but, so anyway... But. But. I if if you like that any of those kind of things I would I would recommend seeing it. It's one of those movies that's kind of a cult classic. It's it's it at least as far as I can tell it's kind of bordering on cult classic status. Um it's definitely worth a look and worth a watch. Um Gora is still better. For for a bad good movie or a good bad movie I guess is probably more yeah. accurate. I think Gora wins out. This was just a, a decent movie. Yeah, you know, Gore is a movie that nobody is going to watch, going to seek out and watch because they most people have never heard of it. I mean, how, come on, it's a Turkish sci-fi movie <laughs> with Turkish gangster rap in the soundtrack. I love that though. I'm, I, 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 I'm telling you, we need to if if I ever if we ever get like whatever the status is, Twitch status is, where you can do watch parties like TV's Travis does. Um, we need to do a watch party of Gora. And everybody sit out, sit down, and watch that with us over Twitch. It's it's, it's, awesome. it's hilarious. So anyway, um, so if you like those kind of movies, and I have said that a bunch of times. I'm sorry. Um, That's watch the it. Third Give it a time shot. It. It's at least the fourth or fifth. So, do you have anything you want to say about it that you did or didn't like about the movie? No, base basically ev- basically everything okay, you said. I like done. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't have anything else to add to it. You know, um, I've. I f- I found it entertaining. I f- I found it cliche, but in the good way. I found it cliche. How? How is it cliche? You could obviously tell tell him, um, the girl he was stealing from was 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 also the girl he saved. You you, you could easily tell that. Right, but but you that was also- that wasn't something that you had to figure out. I mean, they basically in that scene let you know that. So it was it wasn't like, "Oh my gosh, we we should have known this all along." And you knew it right there in the same scene that you met her. So but, um, that wasn't no, too much of a shock. Um um you 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 also knew knew from from the very beginning they were posers um um of uh, uh, the X Gang and not not actually not actually part of the X Gang mainly because Bon um and um and his shirtless body jiggles every single second he um he he pounded his fist yeah so, you know, that it, is... it focused in in slow mo of um of his body rolls rippling and so jiggling. so you know we had mentioned earlier that Sing and Bone were like a you know two dudes that hunt they were like friends and and. Singh ended up being the main character, which you could kind of tell he was going to be the main character, and Bone was his sidekick, and he was a large man, and he ripped Me off large. his shirt. He he, he ripped large. off his shirt at the beginning when they were trying to do this blackmailing. At the beginning, they were trying to pretend that they were part of the Axe Gang because Bone had two axes tattooed on his chest right here. Not tattooed; they were painted on. Okay, they meant, okay painted on whatever, but they were supposed to look like tattoos, and um, across his significant. Uh, abdominal and man booby reason regions, <laughs> and and he would slam on the Perfectly table, and them. everything would just kind of shake, and then they would do that in slow motion, and they had like this weird jelly filled container effect. sound effect, and it was almost <laughs> sickening. It was so bad because it just went on and on, and it kept happening. So okay, so that was kind of funny, but um, um, let's why see. did you start talking about that? I, I don't remember. I was I I, I was <laughs> telling you um, the cliche things, uh, things I'm like. Well, like uh, wait a minute. I mean, How was that cliche? Because there's always like a a, a big no, roly poly guy. In I w- I was talking about from the very beginning. You 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 knew they weren't actually part of the X gang. <laughs> oh right right right. Um, okay. um, I will tell you two things that did surprise me. What's that? Um, um one when I'm. They killed off the Kung Fu Masters. I, th- I, th- I thought there was going to be some, some kind of training montage with those, <laughs> with those three and um and, and Singh, the main character. Yeah. Um, um and and then two, um, 
Um, I did not expect the um, the the landlord and landlady to be martial artist masters. Well, I and, did and not expect. That. I would say that okay. I see that you can say that yeah, that's a cliche in a lot of movies, but then there's also a cliche in a lot of these movies where there's someone who is, you know, his destiny is to be a kung fu master, and it's he's the chosen one, kind of like Neo in Matrix. You know, he just knows this stuff, right? Because he's the one. And so this was also very cliche that way, too. He's the one. He just needed to have his key flow cleared up, which getting his face pummeled into the floor for three feet apparently did it. So um, anyway, I like the movie, and it's one of those movies that I'll go back and watch again just to have fun. It's one of those that you can just put on in the background just for fun. Um, and probably was bad. If you can understand fluent Cantonese. Or if you can read the English subtitles, uh, but I mean, um, <laughs> uh, but uh, um, but I mean, you said have it on in the background. Oh, okay. I just meant to have it on and just watch it, not really paying attention to the storyline because you know what the storyline is. So I see what you're saying, though. And it probably, probably was better than what Dragonheart would have been. <laughs> I mean, yes, it had Dennis Quaid in it. Yes, it had Sean Connery in it. But Sean I think it was Connery. Like like I said last time, it was probably during that time frame when some actors were just like, hey. You know what? You're going to pay me and that check's going to clear? Sure, I'll be in your movie. So I have a feeling it was something like that. But I would like to go back and watch it sometime. It's just not available on Netflix anymore or Amazon. That's so, sad. It, it, All right. So have you got anything else you want to say about this movie before we move on to the geek question? Because is, is, it's getting hot in here. Is, is Don't there, say it. Do not sing it. Do it's not. Get, it's getting hot in here. And I'll take off all my clothes. <laughs> I triggered that one on purpose. Exactly. <laughs> you you can't expect me not not to do that when you tell me not to oh, do that. Oh, I can, but I just chose not to. So anyway. So so anyway, um um I was going to ask is there by chance a sequel? Uh I think there is, I think I have seen something about a kung fu hustle too. I don't know that he's in it. But I think I've seen that, yeah. If there is, I want to watch it. Okay, well, look it up and see. I have no idea. I want to watch it. So, anyway. I want to watch it. You going to do that again? (laughs) Okay. He's going to wait until I start talking. I want to watch it. See, I told you. I knew that. I knew that was going to happen. Piece of crap. And it's how many days before you move? Four. God, it can't happen fast enough. So anyway. So, you, you're going to miss me. You All know right. you are. So uh, we kind of had trouble with a geek question this week. We kind of went back and forth with some stuff. And, yeah. and I'll be honest with you, I don't really have an answer to the one we're about to ask yet. So I'm going to be sitting over here with a little question mark over my over my head here while he's talking and hope, hopes that I come up with something. But uh, anyway, so the question is, and you've got the question because right. I wrote it down for you over there. The, que- the geek question is... Trrrrp. Don't do that. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do it, dang it. All right, go for it. If you were a master of your own martial art style, what, what would it be called and what would the signature move be? All right, man, go for it because, like I said, All I got right. nothing. So... All right. I was going to say one thing, and then we did, we changed the question a little bit. And now I don't have that as an answer. So go ahead. My mine would be called teddy bear style. Okay. <laughs> um. Um. And and basically, this style would um would focus around holds in extreme close quarter combat and using brute strength to to incapacitate your opponent basically bear hugging them to death okay um and um um and the signature move would be called the iron papa bear okay it's original Okay, so That's what's the, the answer? Iron, what's the but what is the Iron Papa Bear? What is that iron? What is that a, move? Um, a a giant strong enough hug to to basically lock someone in and, and crush them to the point where 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 their bones become become their own internal Iron Maiden. Their bones. Wait, wait. Say that again. I'm trying to picture this. Say that again. Okay. A giant powerful hug, hug that um 
that captures the opponent mm -hmm. um, and, and basically uh, the pressure squeezes their bones to, to, to the point where they shatter and point inward and, po and poke all of their inter internal organs, basically becoming an, an internal Iron Maiden. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, that that's it. That's my answer. I mean, wow. You know, if, this is not going this is definitely If you have questions, ask them. I don't, I don't know. I'm still I'm still trying to come up with my own stinking answer here. <laughs> so, um yeah, this this question is going to We've had questions that have gone on for 30 minutes talking about them. They were great questions. This is not one of our this is not one of our best ones. ones. What, All right. What so I what I don't understand is yeah. how um how how am I able to to, to rattle off an answer in a minute, um, and have total and have total comprehension of it, but but you can't come up with an answer to save your life. Where where did my creativity actually come from? If not from you, not from mom, uh, your aunt Thea and your grandmother. I'm not related. To, I'm not related to them by blood. What are you I, talking about? You're not related to them by blood. I, They're your aunt and your grandmother. I, I couldn't inherit what anything the from them. Half of half of of my genetic makeup is my mother. Okay, that means a quarter of your genetic makeup is her. What? <laughs> oh my gosh! This guy's about to move to Ohio, and he's sitting there going, "Well, I'm not. I didn't get anything from them. I'm not related to them. She's your grandmother." <laughs> I was confused how what in Thea the was world? I was confused as as how Anthea fa factored into all. She's this. my sister. She's your aunt. And um is um so she's is, related to you by blood. So is she has any of her genetic material inside of me? No. No, but she has your grandmother's genetic material in her, just like you do. That's how you're related. That's how you can have similar qualities. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mm, I'm going to... Get your hand away from me. I'm telling you, man. I... <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. You do realize this This is the reaction I always love for, right? I don't understand <laughs> how you could sit there at 24 years old and go, well, how am I related to them? What? I'm. Oh my gosh! How I, did I, I was get asking anything? how 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 I could have inherited how? my creativity from them. You didn't inherit your creativity from your aunt Thea, but, but you it's said part, Aunt Thea. It's part of your family line. You have the same <laughs> genetic makeup. Oh my gosh! It's, it's, <laughs> oh my that's, lord! That's a chicken. That's that's yes, like a genetic chicken right gosh, there. Gosh, that is genetically altered chicken right there, man. God, I a genetically engineered it. chicken. I know you're smart, man. Where, where, wh wh when did you check your? Where did you put your intelligence? What did you do with it tonight? It's. I, I think I, I think I've actually packed it up. But you chance. must, you did something with it, because <laughs> I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. I'm honestly flabbergasted that at 24 years. Flabbergasted. Asked, that's a word. Actually, it is a word. I know it is. Look it up. I've never heard. I've so, never heard you say that word before. So why state the fact that a word is a word? When what was the point of saying? Yeah, that's a word. Okay. Because, because I've never heard you say chicken it before. is a word. Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> Box. Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> okay, there's another chicken. My gosh, we're really going deep <laughs> down on this chicken thing. <laughs> that, Probably just stalling because I ain't got an answer. <laughs> that's a vocabulary <laughs> chicken right there. <laughs> okay, so I guess. Okay. I'm just winging this stuff right here, man. Um, just winging it. <laughs> oh, come on. So I would, mine would probably be called the 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 um the uh the 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 mastery uh, of the of the dad bod school of of the mastery of the dad bod. Dad bod. Dad bod kung fu. Because I have the dad bod. I would be a master of it then. Look at me. No, you don't have a dad bod. You've got your bear bod. Um, so it's, the dad bod, so, you know, mine would be, you know, you know, like... What qualifies as okay, the dad bod? You, you got Karate Kid, right? And you got wax on, wax off, right? Yeah. Okay. It would be flick on, flick off from the remote. <laughs> it would be lift up, lift down of the, of the, of the beer. It would be um, push forward, push back with a lawnmower. I mean, you know... So I don't know. I, I I don't know. I'm not creative like him. I can't come up reach with reach in, like, reach up, 
up them of the corn chips, chips and salsa. <laughs> chips and salsa. There you go. So, what would my signature move be? I don't know. Um, the fist pump pump of, of of rooting on your your football team. <laughs> no, it would be the the. Um, Probably be like something to do with breaking their thumbs from from, doing from, what? The, from the Xbox controller. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, people. I'm not good at this stuff. Oh you asked the question, though. It's your question. Because I wanted it to tie into the movie. That didn't mean I was going to have an answer. <laughs> oh my god. So anyway, what is with you, Dad. What? What is with you? Not much. Maybe I check. Maybe I. Maybe you packed my IQ as well. I don't know. No, you definitely packed my creativity. I just don't have any. So, um, yeah, I guess it would be the dad bod technique, and it would be that kind of stuff. But I don't know what my signature move would be. You're very good at just winging stuff like that, and it being good. That's why you're ultimately going to be a writer one of these days. But I'm I, mean, a, I am a writer. I mean, a published author is what I mean. By a writer. <gasps> of course. <laughs> anyway, this this podcast you're, you're this, not gonna miss that. This are episode you? is deteriorating it's one big quickly. Chicken. Yeah, this geek question was not good. Um, that should just be our. Okay, just so be so the you help me, Mister Mister Creativity, okay. Mister I can wing it and come up with really good stuff off the top of my head. Okay, if if I am the master of the kung uh, of the dad bod kung fu, uh-huh. what is my signature move? What would my signature move be? Eternal grounding. What? Explain. Okay. You you've mastered the dad bod, right? <sighs> I've definitely mastered the dad bod. That means you're a dad, right? Yeah. So, so the eternal grounding means um means you um you've locked into a a psychological battle with your opponent um and uh, um and you've delved into their soul with with your eyes and you see he um their their most deepest darkest secret and and then by the sheer power of your voice you you utter you are grounded and the very reverberation of that power causes them to fall to, to their knees and beg for forgiveness No. It's a psychological attack. No. Now I could I could yeah, I could definitely do some mind stuff, but not that. Um You wanted something that's off the top of my head. Yeah, I could just talk to him until they start crying. You <laughs> you are known for that too. He he is guys. He's yeah. done it more than once. I just talk it talk to people until they start crying and then their their tears flood their Nasal passages and it drowns them. I don't know. That, that's, what? <laughs> I'm not good at this. Do you stuff. even biology? No, I don't. Your mother does. I'm not the <laughs> biology. True. I was not the biology that's major. True. Your mother was oh the chemistry gosh. major and the biology minor. I was psychology and Russian history. Remember? Oh yeah. Why the frack did you choose Russian history? Oh, of and like, all things. <laughs> okay, so. Now I gotta learn the Russian word for chicken. Anyway, I I, I did want to learn Russian, but um, UAB where I went to school they didn't offer the Russian language. So uh, here I am, nineteen eighty seven, eighty eight, something like that, and I'm a psychology major, having switched from electrical engineering major, uh, and find out that when I switch majors, I have to have a minor. I can't just major in psychology, and that be it. I have to have a minor as well. Well, that kind of pissed me off. I didn't want to have to do a minor. Okay, what's the Russian word for chicken? Uh, I'll, let's see if they, right, let's let's see if they cluck in Russian. <laughs> okay. Wait, i got to turn it off. Kuritsa. Kuritsa. Okay, whatever. So, so anyway... Um, so they told me I had to have I had to I had, a, to, I'm sorry. I had to have a minor, and that kind of pissed me off because I didn't want to have to take classes and things that I didn't really want to take classes in because I knew that being a major in psychology, I had to go to grad school. So the minor was gonna was a waste. It was not gonna do me anything for my career. And so you chose Russian history of all. So things? I'd always been fascinated by Russian history and Soviet history, and I said, hmm. They had just started an international studies program at UAB, 
and you could focus you could do international so technically my minor was international studies with a focus on the Soviet Union so you could do an international studies major or minor with a focus in a particular area and so that's what I did I said okay cool you're making me have a minor I'm going to study Russian history and they said why I said because you're making me take a minor and I'm going to grad school I don't need a minor so I'm going to just study something that interests me so I minored in Russian and Soviet history in Russian history that's that's it. Did you <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> There's a green fog coming this way from here. <laughs> I need to edit. I wish wish I could just edit. I, I need to put in a fart sound effect on here. <laughs> oh goodness! What? <laughs> and there's no airflow in here at all. It is just one stank, stale. <laughs> air floating it's one big dutch oven it's one big dutch oven oh golly (laughs) something's fermenting in here that's for damn sure it could be your beer Uh, no that's already gone that's already i got one swallow left and it's already fermented it was fermented in the can so anyway so that's look that's that's it look we 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 gotta go man this 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 episode was just kind of petered out here um it's one um um the the title of this episode sh- sh- should just be one giant chicken this episode this episode the name of this episode should be we're so sorry <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> All right, good. Look, so I will. I promise we will have a better geek question next time, and we will have good answers next time. We better. Um, but we've got to pick our next movie. Yep. All right, so. I need more dice, though. I've, I've just got a D20. Oh, okay. I got some dice. Hold on. Yeah. One second. I, One packed, second. A, I packed up all my other dice. No, I did not. <laughs> oh, not my, the metal ones. Get my metal dice out. My metal dice that are very pretty, but they don't really roll that well. Exactly. They don't roll well. Just roll the dadgum dice. So anyway, we always roll high or low. We'll do a high or low for Amazon or, or Netflix. All right. So let's see what we got. So what we got. Seven. So that would be Amazon. Amazon. All right. And now... And now we need to roll a d10 for the genre. Two. Which is science fiction. All right. Yay, I love science fiction. And and then we roll a d100 for the actual number of the movie in that list. And we get... One. We Literal. botched. We botched on a roll on a hundred roll. D100 roll. Literally, That's you got a bad. zero one. All right. I mean, seriously. That is like a super ultra botch. So anyway, so we got a one. So that should be pretty easy to find that movie. So y'all just hold tight. I'm going to put in our little wait music, and I'm going to go find it. But it's pretty much going to be the very first thing I look at. So and, I'll be right back. And I'll dance to help you pass the time. I ain't got my note. Okay, so actually, this interests me. I'm glad to see this. Hey, what um, is this? What is it? It's a it's an Amazon original uh, called "The it? Vast of Night" from 2019. I actually saw kind of a trailer of it on Amazon the other night. It looks really interesting. So What's I'm actually kind of interested to see it. It's it's uh, the little tagline is in the twilight of the 1950s on one fateful night in New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico, Area 51, all that kind of stuff out there. Um, a young switchboard operator, Faye, and her charismatic radio DJ, Everett, uh, discover a strange audio frequency that could change their small town and future forever. Which sounds really cheesy, but it's gotten pretty good reviews, and it looks really interesting. So I am looking forward to seeing that. So... Uh, y'all hang into there and we'll take a look at it because listen, it's an Amazon original, so it won't go away. So we'll definitely be seeing that next time. Oh yeah. So, oh, Oh, well, I take that back. The plan is to see that movie. As we've said before, 
we try to keep this this podcast clean. We've had a couple that were questionable, and so we've kind of started screening our movies a little bit better. So if it ends up having a lot of inappropriate type stuff in it that we don't like included in our podcast and stuff, we'll change uh, it. We'll change it. Follow Twitter. We'll let you know if we change it. But I don't think it's going to have to change. It's a 1950s sci-fi movie, so or set in the 50s. So I doubt you're going to have a lot of that questionable stuff. So anyway, so that's it. It's a 2019 movie, Amazon original, called The Vast of Night. Sci-fi, and what, what's their classification? What do they say it is? They say, they, I mean, it fell in the sci-fi category, but it is, they list it as, where is it? Where did I see it? Drama, mystery, mystery sci-fi. sci-fi. Ooh. So that sounds, that sounds good. Ooh. Yeah, I like all those. Add all those together, it sounds like a good time. Yeah. So... That's all we got. Yeah. That's and all we got, we're going to yeah. put you guys out of your misery and move on. And we will be back Thursday night. We're going to do another one Thursday night. Hopefully, we'll be better prepared for that one. Hopefully. <laughs> and you and be we'll review of, this of movie. My original question. And we'll work on a better question and better answers for our geek question. And who knows what we'll do? We might have a drink in his honor since that'll be the last one that we're doing together before he's gone. Because the I next one we do drinks. will be. Two separate little screens. Like Steven and Smashy. So like Steven and Smashy from Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. going to have one person here and one person here. Two different screens because he's going to be in Ohio and I'm going to be here. We can't really sit next to each other. That would be some kind of weird space-time continuum thing that I don't know how to do. I'll always be next to you, Father. Please move. <laughs> Please move. Okay, I'm moving. Okay, thank you. I'm moving. I'm moving. <laughs> No, I'm moving. out. I'm moving. I'm moving. <laughs> Bye. So anyway, so look, guys, y'all have a y'all have a great great night, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, listen, you can find us anywhere. You can find us here, obviously. Uh, podcast is uh, Gene Pool Variety Hour at Podbean.com. You can find us on YouTube. Just search YouTube for Gene Pool Variety Hour. We don't have our Vanity Earl yet, so just search for us there. Sadly, we because don't. then these these are these and the audio of the podcast are both on YouTube as well. You can find us anywhere you search for podcasts: Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, yeah, you, Podbean, any of those kind of places. You can find us anywhere. Okay? We're desperate, so please give us some validation. And, and you know what? Review. Yeah, if you can, if you want to give us reviews, and just let us. You know, that would be great. And look, if you don't want to give us a positive review, give us a real review. If we'll you want to give us some real criticism, constructive review. criticism, and things like that, that would be great. So I'd really appreciate that, guys. So uh, y'all have a great. Great night, and we'll see you guys next time on the Gene Pool Variety Hour. And always remember, stay nerdy, my friends.